Thanks. Ebooks are having a hard time commanding premium prices. We've already seen hardcover equivalent prices disappear, and Amazon is teaching consumers that $10 is the most they should ever pay for one of those ebook things. So where's it going to end? Uh, I hope not at zero, and we're looking at ways to stop that. The problem is there's just too many books. We have thousands of them being published every year, and nothing ever goes out of print thanks to print on demand. And if it did go out of print in the past, Google and libraries are going to scan it and throw it back on the heap. So users are out there drowning in content, and we have very crude tools for managing and organizing that content. So we're in a situation now where everything's available, but the many monopolies that books have enjoyed over the years, let's say being the only dictionary that I have on my shelf, or being the only Italian cookbook, cookbook that this store sells, or the only novel I put in my briefcase and got on the airplane with, those are gone. Users have access 24-7 to everything, so all the books start to look the same, and if your book isn't meeting my needs, I can move to something else cheap. Logos Bible Software started in 1991 with six e-books. Today we publish 10,000 e-books, all in the single knowledge domain of Bible, st Bible study. As we went towards 10,000 books over those 18 years, we learned that users got tired of too many search results. They wanted more content, they wanted more books, but we were overwhelming them. They didn't really want a bigger, longer list of search results. They wanted answers to their questions. So we reinvented our software a few years ago. It used to be a generic ebook reader with a generic search engine and looked like all the other ebook readers you see. We reinvented it as a Bible study answer machine. We built knowledge of the tasks the users were bringing to the software into it. So it knows what a pastor needs to do every week. It knows that communion is the same thing as Eucharist, that infant baptism is the same thing as pedo baptism. It knows how you parse and render a Bible reference, how you compare it, search for it, look it up in an index. We've bundled together backlist and frontlist content and built a user interface that doesn't open to a cover of the book from which you go on to page one, but rather to a task-oriented user interface. Many of our users don't even use search as their primary way of going into the product. Instead, they use a guide. So our passage guide lets you enter a passage, and then it sorts through your thousands of books as if it was a research assistant and brings back just those few books that'd be helpful to you preparing this sermon or doing this Bible study. In the same way, if you want to look up a single word, our word study guide will do all the steps of a manual word study. It'll look up the Hebrew word, it'll point out the best lexicons with definitions, it'll even visualize different translations, show you statistics and graphs. If you do want to do a basic search, the system recognizes keywords in the knowledge domain. So if you search for communion in your entire library, it can suggest alternate search terms, it can suggest user-created reading lists, it can even tell you the best articles to look up in Bible dictionaries and encyclopedias. And then we have painstakingly tagged databases like our alignment between the original Greek and Hebrew and the English, which lets us do really cool stuff like highlight on the right one phrase in English and see how it was translated in the translation on the left while seeing the Greek below. We have data visualizations, so if you want to see patterns in the text to look for repeated phrases, we've got that kind of specialized data. And we have special data sets that we've hand-built about people, places, and things and controlled vocabulary for our knowledge domain. And these data sets are like glue that connect all the different ebooks together. So we've hand-linked and hand-disambiguated all the people, all the names, all the place names, linked things to latitude, longitude, linked them to special thematic maps, and then provided visualizations that let people copy them into PowerPoint or put them into their papers. And these are all unique data sets that didn't exist in any book form before. What we've learned is, that users will pay for digital content, but they do expect it to be cheaper. So we don't want to keep going down to lower prices, so we bundle frontlist and backlist content together so that the user sees a higher value proposition, but we're able to retain a higher price point. Then we integrate tools and content so that we meet the user's needs with exactly the task they want to do. The software knows what books are available, and it knows what tools and tasks the user is going to bring to it, so it can bring back exactly the right results. And then we build unique digital assets. And these unique digital assets are glue that connect the existing ebooks together. It creates a virtuous circle, a network effect in which each new book added to the system and connected to these data sets becomes more valuable by its connection to the other pieces. This has allowed us to maintain a premium price point 
Our best-selling product is $630 in a world where there's lots of free Bible content on the internet. And our users consider that price a fantastic deal because it solves their problems, doesn't just give them a list of search results. Thanks.